100%, I'm going with Charles Griffin on this one. Uh, Charles Griffin is definitely bringing a freaky condition package this year. And honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I do think Charles Griffin's a little bit underrated here. And I think he's going to shock a lot of people. All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. Let's start out talking about Nick Walker. Then we're going to talk about the seemingly reignited beef between Nick and Blessing Awodabu. So Nick Walker did a Q&A on his Instagram stories. It's always interesting when Nick does a Q&A because he's always got something interesting to say. So I'm going to play all those for you guys right here, and then we're going to talk about them. Hey, I, I dig Ian's confidence, but... Um, Ian has never beat me yet, and he's never going to beat me. I will definitely, most likely, be at the Arnold in Columbus. Um, I don't think I'll be competing at it, um, but I will definitely be at the Arnold. I'm expecting to win. Um, I think with the package I'll be bringing this year, um, I think I've already surpassed uh, my best look last year, which was the Arnold. Um, I know everyone you know, thinks I look small, yada, yada, whatever. I'm just flat. Conditioning is really where it needs to be. Um, and I think once we truly fill out, you know, and dry out during all the peak week process, I think it's going to be a package that everyone's going to be proud of for sure. 100% I'm going with Charles Griffin on this one. Uh, Charles Griffin is definitely bringing a freaky condition package this year and honestly I'm looking forward to seeing it um, I do think Charles Griffin's a little bit underrated here and I think he's going to shock a lot of people alright so the key interesting points about those clips number one Nick says he's not doing the Arnold Classic as a competitor which goes against what we heard from him earlier on in the season he said his goal was to come back and win a second Arnold Classic title he said that's something he's always wanted to do and apparently that was one of the main things that him and Matt disagreed on the last Arnold Classic, Nick wanted to do it, Matt didn't want him to do it, and that was what I heard was the main disagreement between them. Then Nick said he was going to come back and do 2023, but it looks like this year he will be sitting it out and focusing exclusively on his Olympia prep. His eyes are on the prize in that regard. Now, the second part of this was Nick was asked about Ian saying he's going to beat Nick at the Olympia. Nick says there's no chance that Ian's going to beat him, and I agree with Nick there. I don't think there is a chance that Ian is going to beat him. I think Nick is going to be fourth and I don't see Ian in the top three ahead of Nick um, so I agree with that analysis there now the final piece is what kind of reignited the beef between Blessing and Nick or at least seemingly Nick was asked a question who do you think will place higher Charles or Blessing and he says definitely Charles which if you guys remember Charles and Blessing did go head to head at the Indy Pro it was very close between them but Blessing ended up winning Charles ended up winning the Cali Pro to qualify for the Olympia, which Blessing did not end up competing in. So Charles has yet to beat Blessing on stage. Supposedly, Charles has added a ton of size in between now and then. But it's also worth pointing out that Charles trains with Matt Jansen, who also is training Nick for the Olympia. So Nick is kind of showing some home team loyalty there. But I don't disagree with Nick. I think he, I think he's spot on. I think Charles will place higher with Blessing. I think that's the most accurate part about this beef is that I, I really think Charles and Blessing are going to be in the same call-out, and I think it's likely going to be for placings 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think Blessing is great. I think Charles is great, but I think they're kind of going to be on the outside looking in, and, and if either one of them cracks the top 10, I think that'll be a huge accomplishment for him, but I think Charles is looking pretty incredible right now, and I would put him ahead of Blessing as well. But obviously, Blessing caught wind of this, and he did not like it. So he started out with a story responding to Nick's story. He said, you disloyal... I'm actually not sure what word that's supposed to be. F, asterisk, asterisk, L, fool, disloyal fool, brick looking ass. I'm glad you took my advice and went back to Matt. You ain't nothing without Matt. You are done in 11 days, brick. Blessing reminding me a little bit of calling uh, of Kanye West calling Pete Davidson skeet, calling Nick brick here. Then Blessing also would go on to say um, when someone asked Nick Blessing or Samson Dowda, he also went on to say Nick answered Samson, so he's now placed two guys ahead of Blessing. And I would agree with that as well. I like I, I think Samson's got a great physique, and I think him and Blessing would be uh, probably in the same call-out. 
And I think Samson would probably come on top. And he says, Brick, you suck. 12 days and it's downhill from there. And then Blessing also went on to post a recent video of him uh, training arms and showing kind of that crazy back width that Blessing is known for. And Blessing says, this is for Brick and his boyfriend, 11 days out. Now, to be fair, I'm not counting Blessing out here. Blessing did win two shows to get to the Olympia, which is very impressive. Blessing is one of the better bodybuilders in this lineup. But if I haven't reminded you enough already, I'll remind you again. There's 32 guys that we know are probably doing the show this year. 36 total had qualified. Blessing is one of them. So even though he's one of the better guys in that lineup, if he were top 10, top 15, or 10 to 15th, that would be a really good placing for him. If he were able to crack the top 10, I think that would be miraculous for Blessing. And I think he's got a great physique, great aesthetics, a pretty a pretty beautiful physique to look at. His conditioning was better than it has been in the past, especially at the uh, Indy Pro. But I still think the lower body needs to be brought up to an extent to be more competitive. And I really don't think a rivalry between Blessing and Nick is even realistic at this point. I don't think that Blessing and Nick will be in the same callout unless it's a numerical callout. I really think that Nick... Um, is really much further along in terms of overall development than Blessing is. And I think he's kind of in a league above Blessing, to be completely honest. Even though I do feel Blessing has made massive improvements over the past year or so, I don't think he's on the same level as Nick. Nor do I think this beef is really that real. I think it's mostly manufactured. We saw Blessing call out Nick at the New York Pro after he won. And I think it's mostly just to, just to stir up some entertainment. To make the show more exciting but realistically i don't even think we're going to see these guys in the same call out now you guys can let me know if you agree or disagree with that analysis in the comments below who do you think will place higher blessing or nick and then i guess also blessing or samson and then blessing or charles how do you guys see that shaking out at the olympia now next up in the news we got another physique update from urs kalsinski at under two weeks out from the 2022 mr olympia courtesy of the dragon's layer instagram page now, it was a very brief clip towards the end of that video where you could see Urs posing, and you got to see him pose from the front, not just those back shots where you could see his striated glutes, but you got to see the, the front shots here. And honestly, if you take some uh, freeze frames here to make it easier to look at, I really think Urs has brought up his arms. His biceps look significantly better to me. The flare in his lats from the front looks a lot more pronounced, further accentuating that V taper and that classic flow. It goes without saying, especially after seeing the striated glute stuff, that his conditioning is just bar none his conditioning is on point and his, his shape and his size look to have improved i'll just say it i think urs is going to be top three this year i think he's going to shock a lot of people i think he's going to be in the conversation i think he's going to push terrence a lot of people seem to be jumping on the urs bandwagon and i think rightfully so i think he's the real deal now i have seen some people speculate that maybe urs peaked a little bit too soon and could that be an issue for him if he misses his peak for the olympia because he peaked too early I think that is a fair point. I think that is a fair question to ask, but personally, I don't think so. I think that Urs has been so consistent with his conditioning thus far. I think he knows what he's doing. I think he'll still be probably the most conditioned guy in classic physique, um, and I think he's going to be a, a pretty incredible battle on the classic physique Olympia stage. Now, next up in the news, we got another recent physique update from Michael Crizzo. A couple days ago, he was training arms, and he posted a video today training legs. We also got a most muscular shot from Crizzo. And so all this is around two weeks out from Michael Crizzo's first Olympia ever. Now, I predicted that Michael Crizzo will crack the top 10. I also predicted that he's going to land in ninth, just ahead of Ian Valier, who I predicted in 10th place. And interestingly enough, Brandon Curry, he gave out his Olympia predictions that I thought were pretty interesting. Um, he had himself winning, Rami in second, Bonak in third, Hadi in fourth, Raphael Brandau in fifth place, and Michael Crizzo in sixth place. So Brandon Curry predicted him in top six, ahead of Andrew Jack, Samson Dowda, Hunter Labrada, and interestingly enough, Brandon Curry put Nick Walker in 10th place in his predictions. So I thought that was interesting that the champ, Brandon Curry, he sees something in Crizzo as well, even more than I do. And I've been one of the guys that's been hyping up Crizzo the most. I um, mean, he's got him three placings ahead, three three placings further ahead than I do, which I thought was very, very interesting. So let me know what you guys think about that interesting prediction in the comments down below. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos like this one. The Olympia is coming up soon, and you don't want to miss a minute of the coverage. So make sure you click subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.
All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.